This is a quick review of the potential energy and the kinetic energy diagrams. Some people have a little confusion with those. Uh, this over here is kind of an example of a potential energy diagram. So we start with the reactants and go to the products. So of this kind of picture, there are five things you should know about. Okay, we should have the reactants, we have the products, we have the transition state, we have the energy it takes to get to the transition state, which is called the activation energy, E sub A, and we have the difference in energy from the initial to the final state, which is called the delta H. Now, some of these things are uh, uphill and some are downhill. Here, we're talking about starting from the reactants, going to the products, that's downhill, so that's an exothermic reaction. If we started and went uphill, that would be endothermic reaction. Now, the kinetic energy diagram is a different diagram altogether, and that's the one that shows uh, how much energy the particles happen to have, you know, how much energy of motion they have, and that's the one that has a threshold energy in it. So we'll see that kind of diagram also. We want to know how these two relate to each other and how they change when you put in a catalyst or uh, change the temperature. Here's a nice typical picture of a potential energy diagram. So we're talking about the energy of the, re of the uh, reaction, energy stored up in the bonds. So the things you should be able to relate, we should sign, okay, here are the reactants. This little line here, that's the energy of the reactants. So somebody said, what's the energy of the reactants? In this case, you'd say it's 50 kilojoules. The products, wherever it ends up, okay, and so these products, I'll put P, and that would be at 100 kilojoules in this case. Now, if we ask for the delta H, the delta H is the difference in energy from the reactants to the products, and it's always measured as the final number minus the initial number. So in this case, it's going to be 100 minus 50, so that's going to be a positive 50 kilojoules. So this would be an endothermic reaction, and it's got a positive value for the uh, uh, energy. Now, the other parts on this, we should say here's the transition state, and the idea here is that the reactants have to bump into each other, so maybe we have reactants that look like this and this, and then when they bump into each other, they turn into this transition state, and then they can break up to be products. So this transition state, usually very high energy, and the other part about this is the activation energy, E sub A, and that's the energy it takes to go from the reactants to the uh, transition state. Now that's always going to be an uphill, so it's always going to be a positive value. So in this case, E sub A, final minus initial, so 250, for the transition state, minus 50. So we can see that's going to be a positive 200 kilojoules for the activation energy. Now we could do the same thing here with a uh, exothermic reaction. In exothermic, here's the reactants, A and B. Here are the products. We can see the delta H. Now again, this is going to be 20, the final value, 20, minus the initial value, which is 40. So in this case, it's going to come out to be negative 20 kilojoules. And that is always true. Whenever you have an exothermic reaction, it's going to be a negative value for the delta H, and vice versa. If you see negative, you see negative delta H, you know it's exothermic. You know energy is given off, and energy would show up on the right side of the equation. So for this case here, we'd say A plus B turns into C plus D plus heat, heat energy. Endothermic reactions, the heat would be on the left side of the equation. Here's our transition state. So we can see our activation energy. Again, will be positive, 100 minus 40. So E sub A is going to be 60 kilojoules. So we have products, we have reactants, transition state, delta H, and activation energy. Now, the other part, of, the other kind of diagram is called the kinetic energy graph. Now, potential energy is the energy of position, the energy built into the bonds. But here, this is the energy just of the motion of the particles. So we have these little particles, and they're flying around, and some are going fast, and some are going slowly, and they're bumping into each other very randomly. And we find out that, you know, some have high energy, 
Okay, some have low energy, most of them have some kind of a medium energy. And for this kind of thing we say, well, the threshold energy is just the amount of energy that particles need when they collide into each other so that they can react. So we could say this little area right down here, that tiny little area right there, is the uh, number of particles that would be able to react at this temperature. Now, temperature is average kinetic energy. So looking at this curve, you can see here's the peak, okay, and it peaks out here at 40, if we say each of these lines means 10. So this would be the graph for a sample of a substance at 40 degrees Celsius. Now, if we were to cool it down, let's use blue for cooler, then it would be more to the left. So over here is more cool. And if it was red, okay, it would be hotter gases or hotter substances off to the right because this kinetic energy is a sideways graph. So if I said, okay, I want a cooler sample, then it wouldn't be more to the left. So it's sort of taking this little curve and squishing it. And we can see that very few particles are going to have enough energy to react. And that's not surprising. So this would be a lower average. And for our same numbers here, if this is 40, 30, it looks like about 25. So this would be maybe a 25 degree sample. Now in the same way, if we warmed it up, it would be sort of stretching this graph out to the right. And we can see if you warm it up, now all of these particles have enough energy to react. And that's much more significant. So if you wanted to speed up a reaction, warming it up always does that. Now how do these two things work together? We have our threshold energy, okay, we have our kinetic energy diagram, and we have our potential energy diagram. If we take and turn our kinetic energy on its side, you can see what happens is that here, the activation energy kind of corresponds with our threshold with our threshold energy. And the idea is that the particles that have this much energy are the ones that would be able to get over our energy barrier and turn into products. So the threshold energy is the amount of kinetic energy that particles have in order to get over the potential energy barrier. So they're going to take their kinetic energy, use it to get over the potential energy barrier. So they trade in their kinetic energy for potential energy. Now you can see what's going to happen here is that if we were to heat up this graph, heat up the uh, substance, well that would change this curve. Okay, so now more particles are going to be able to get over the threshold, to get over the uh, energy barrier. The, the more particles are going to collide enough so they can form that transition state. But it doesn't change the barrier. The barrier is not changed, just the um, energy of the particles that are able to get over that barrier. Now the last part on here is what if we put in a catalyst? Now a catalyst would have a lower activation energy. So somehow, instead of being this th uh, transition state, it would give you an alternate transition state. Maybe due to the surface of the catalyst, Maybe the particles come in, instead of having to bang into each other really hard, okay, that the catalyst holds them in place so that another particle can come in and, you know, just doesn't take nearly as much energy um, to do it with a catalyst involved. Well, if that's the case, you can see what's going to happen is this goes down, and that means the threshold energy moves over. So now all these particles, even at the same temperature, all these particles now would have enough energy to react. So that would speed up the reaction. So if we're saying catalyst, catalyst lowers the, thre uh, the um, activation energy, it lowers that little graph, and what it does is it moves the threshold energy to the left. So the catalyst has two effects. It changes the potential energy diagram, it changes the kinetic energy diagram temperature okay does nothing to this diagram the energy of the reactants the energy of the products the energy of the transition state those are all the same whether it's hot or cold but for uh, the kinetic energy diagram you know the increased temperature sh shifts the curve to the right and that's why more particles are able to the react so temperature does affect this picture does not affect the other picture okay catalyst changes threshold energy and it lowers the activation energy so it changes both graphs. 
And that's what you're supposed to know about kinetic and potential energy diagrams.